Do you need international investments? That's the question everybody keeps asking. And the answer is yes. Spoiler alerts. But let me let me convince you why that's the case. Let me explain to you the importance of investing internationally. A lot of people are trying to forego it right now. And to show you why they're foregoing it, we're going to compare two ETFs, the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF and the Vanguard Total International Stock Market ETF. The international stock market invests in everything that's not the USA and the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF invests in just US stock. And we're going to compare their performance, something I loathe doing because past performance never equals uh, future performance because winning lottery numbers in the past often don't come up again. But with that said, it does paint quite the story and a lot of novice investors will lean into past performance in making decisions. If we look here, VTI, the US stock market, had nearly 12% per year over the past decade, while VXUS re returned for a little over 4% per year over the past decade, year over year over year. That's insane, right? 4% compounding is a lot less than nearly 12% compounding. And so when investors see this, they get excited. They're like, oh my gosh, the US stock market's so good. And why? Why wouldn't the US stock market be the best place in the world to invest? US number one, baby. We have all these cool fighter jets flying over, a bald eagle, uh, eagle screeching loudly. And like football, our football in America is better than everybody else's football, obviously. So why wouldn't you want to be in the USA? Additionally, USA, whether you like it or not, in terms of an ethical perspective, we work our people here hard, unlike the rest of the developed world. Like we look at France right now, they're rioting because the pension age is going from 62 to 64. In the United States, we're like, if you want full pension benefits, our social security is what social security is what we call it here. You need to be 67 and we will give you crappy food and you'll die early and your life expectancy is crap and you need to work nonstop. We're not going to give you maternity leave. You should not be with your newborn kid. You need to be in the office working to make our capitalist economy work. Now, you might not like that, but from an investment perspective, certainly is appealing. The company, like the United States has chosen to prioritize corporate profit and thus that benefits the investors over the well-being of a lot of its citizens relative to its contemporaries. I would still prefer the United States to Bangladesh, mind you, but it's hard to make an argument that living in the Netherlands isn't a little better than the United States. But I love the USA, so I'm not going anywhere. Moving back over to the investing world, when you see the difference in performance, you see this bias confirmed. You feel in your heart that, yeah, the USA is the place to be. Additionally, US companies, they have international exposure. They have international exposure. Apple sells iPhones everywhere. So if the USA has a bad time and they can't afford iPhones anymore, hey, look, Apple can sell their iPhones across the rest of the world. Not a big deal. So ultimately here, it's e obvious, it's obvious, the, internet, the United States is the best place to invest. But there's a catch, a catch. Just because a, an economy is a good economy, just because a company is a good company, does not make it a good investment. There's a second part to it, isn't there? It's the part that everybody always forgets. What is the price you're buying it at? Huh, didn't think about that, right? Everybody knows, for example, Apple's a great company. Apple at $1,000 a share would suck. It's right now trading around 150 so if you if somebody offered you, hey, Apple's a great company. You should buy my share of stock for $1,000. That's a crap investment. Great company, crap investment. The United States has a bit of that problem as well because as time has passed, the United States has done great. This came from BlackRock. It's called International Stocks. Why bother? And if we look, the yellow line shows U.S. outperformance relative to international. The To calculate this little graph here, they take international performance and they subtract out the U.S. performance against it. And what we see here in this past decade, U.S. has been doing great. It's been thriving, doing a phenomenal job. But then there's a kicker there. If the USA is doing so well, when is it finally priced correctly? When do people start to get a little too biased also as well? When do they start leaning into the United States a bit too much to say, hey, it's too good of an economy. We trust it. And they start paying a bit of a premium for it. Well, that's really concerning. That means in the future, even if international economies are worse whether it's too ethical or too underdeveloped, they also might be fetching such a low price, they're a better investment. They have more room to grow. Their price has a higher chance of being off. Likewise, if we scroll down, there's another kicker here of why you might want international exposure. When the US market sucks, international markets do better. When the United States 
the stock market is producing less than 6%, international is outperforming by 2.3% on average. So while we're in a period right now where the United States is rocking it for out of 08, prior to that, it's way more mixed. Now it could be, it could be that the next decade is also US dominated, right? If you look at it, you kind of see a bit of a pattern of switching back and forth, but that's gambler's fallacy. Who knows what is ahead? Now, the good news is a lot of companies actually try to predict what's ahead. So instead of you just saying, sitting there being like, ooh, I see orange, yellow, orange, yellow, orange, yellow. You see a lot of yellow here, which means a lot of orange is coming up. Instead of that sophisticated Davos analysis, uh, we can actually look what the experts say. This is an article from Morningstar, Experts Forecast Stock and Bond Returns 2023 edition, in which Morningstar tried to synthesize everybody's financial predictions of the, of the future, their investment predictions over a 10 year period. Now, there's a lot of caveats here. When you looked at BlackRock versus JP Morgan versus Morningstar, Research Affiliates, Schwab, Vanguard, they all had different parameters. Some adjusted for inflation, some didn't. Some looked at 15 years, some looked at 10 years. This was Morningstar's best synthesizing of it into one nice comparative graph. And every single firm, no matter what criteria they tweaked here and there, they all came to the same conclusion. U.S. equities are forecasted over the next 10 years to underperform not just the emerging markets where a lot of growth is there and has potential, but also the developed markets like Europe. That's right. That's right. When, we, when everybody's looking around the world right now, they're saying, wow, people really like U.S. stock. Maybe a little too much. Maybe relative to price, the U.S. is not doing as well as the rest of the world. That doesn't mean the United States economy is doomed. It just means from an investment perspective, it might not be as good. So what's your takeaway here? Well, it's really easy. It's a very straightforward takeaway. You should have some international exposure. When we look back in time, we say that when the US stock market is struggling and underperforming 6% or less compared to the S&P 500's historical average of about 10%, we know that international stock is historically outperforming by about 2%. So when US is struggling, you need some direct international. Just having indirect exposure because an Apple, a U.S. company, is selling iPhones in China, that's not enough. You need genuine international exposure. Additionally, there's a lot of evidence that's suggesting that international is going to outperform in the future. At the end of the day, you might have your gut opinion, but we see all these major financial firms looking at the world and saying, yeah, we're looking international for growth. Now, will that happen next year? No idea. Will they be right? No idea. They could be totally wrong. Uh, you know, we see in the United States in particular, we've become very accustomed to pollsters and an analyst being wrong all the time. Remember the 2016 election? How's President Clinton doing? Hmm, that never happened. We got President Trump instead. Polls can be wrong, uh, wrong. financial firms can be wrong, but there is a good takeaway here. Uh, whether their financial firms are wrong or not, can you personally afford the risk of not having exposure to the rest of the world if the rest of the world starts outperforming the United States? Is that something you can afford? Make sure you're not getting caught up in America first mentality. Make sure you're not getting caught up in chasing the past performance over the past 10 years and looking at how the US markets outperformed international markets considerably. Make sure you're looking at this in a holistic picture and looking at it right. Your eyes need to be on the future, what potentially could happen, and make sure you're ready to benefit from that future. You do not want to be left behind because you have an America first portfolio. And it turns out while America is doing fine from an investing perspective, it's doing crap. And the people who popped on board the rest of the world are the ones thriving. Don't get left behind. Make sure you're diversified and make sure your portfolio is suited for whatever the future holds.